welcome back. This is October the 2nd and we're back again at our test yard with our hives for our next video. The last time you were with us we removed honey from the hives by way of the auto flow and removing combs of comb honey. We put on mouse guards um, and here we are back approximately four and a half weeks later and it's snowing. Um, you may recall we did not speak about feeding either pollen paddies or syrup and there was a couple of reasons for that and I want to go over those because these are very important for our episode today. Approximately four to five weeks ago we were looking at forecasts and it looked like we were going to have a very short window between people taking honey off their hives and being able to feed before we got cold weather. Already we've got a lot of co people commenting on various social media feeds about why my bees are not feeding. One of the reasons we hesitated to speak about feeding is because we wondered if we might lose the feeding window this year. What has occurred is a very quick transition from warm weather and having honey supers on to cold weather. And the reason that's a challenge is simply because you need 14 degrees in the daytime or higher for the bees to have the appetite to feed and have the ability to bring that feed down into the hive and sufficiently dehydrate it into a honey form so they can use it for winter feed. In some areas in Alberta, especially in our area here in Strathcona County, we've pretty much lost that window entirely. So if your hive is underweight, and you may wonder what underweight is, we're gonna show you and tell you. If your hive is underweight, you're gonna to have to think of a much more serious strategy which is called amalgamation, which is where we move one hive, two hives into one hive, or move frames of honey between, or if you've not extracted all of your honey, keep some of those frames back because you're gonna to need to put it back into your hive to bring your hive up to a weight that will indeed last the bees um, enough stores to last the bees through to March or April when we get our first warm break. Now I want to draw your attention to the hive that we have here. Um, this is one of our um, new hives that we established in the springtime. Right now it's in three deep boxes in the, and uh, today we're going to take off the top and the vent box and the inner cover and we're going to show you the third box which is hopefully where there's some surplus honey frames and then we're going to reduce the box that uh, reduce the hive down to two boxes with the vent box on the top and the lid and we're going to move it over to the left here which you can't see yet to our hive scale which is new technology being offered by hive world to provide you more insight as to what is happening with the weight of a hive in a given geographical area information is going to be available on our website so join us now, I'm going to show you what the inside of a hive looks like. It's approximately two degrees today. Um, the bees are going to be behaving very differently than when we were here the last time. And before we go today, we'll have the weight of this hive as it was recorded by our hive scale for our first weight reading of the season. This is our third box. The bees um, grew this hive really well over the summer and we put on an extra box to make sure they didn't swarm and they've built out five frames of honey for us very kindly that we can spread between other hives in the same yard. Not full. But this guy on the edge here, you can see down there it's all capped honey right out to the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this end frame, just for the sake of the video. We'll replace this end frame with a full one. And if you look down there, you can start to see the, the, the exterior of the cluster.
Okay. Um, we've got a, this is a very, very full hive. It's very, very heavy. We're gonna get a really good reading of weight once we get there, but on the outside, I replaced a frame that was not full. So if you've got more than two or three frames on the top that are not full, replace them with full frames of honey before you start extracting anything. Or if you've already extracted them, just be aware that you need to make sure that the fullest frames of honey are in the center because the bees will come up the center in the spring, not out the sides. Now for the purposes of the video, we will open up the hive so you can see what the cluster looks like today. So this is a very, very full hive. Can you see underneath too? Okay, so we've moved our new two box hive over to the new location. It's cool so the bees are not flying so they'll, they'll orientate back here fine. What we've done is we've put it onto a new hive scale. You can see here it's the, uh, the smart hive monitor. And on the hour every hour, the device is going to tell us the weight of this hive you'll be able to be fascinated how that's important when we start to post um, when we start to post the results of the readings on our website so you can see a hive in Strathcona what's happening to it how many pounds of honey or how many pounds of weight does it lose in a cold week in December how much honey is coming in in July that information will be available to you um, as we go through the winter and into the spring and next year. We'll add more of these smart hive monitors around the province and into BC and Saskatchewan to provide an even larger array of information for our clients. So you'll notice as well this hive is not wrapped. Now we do not recommend wrapping before Thanksgiving even if the weather is cooler. The important reason for that is because this hive is coming to the end of the fall bee hatch. Some may even still have brood in here. The queen may even still be laying. And it's important that those bees are given the best chance of survival because they're going to carry the queen through to March and April. If you wrap early, the temperature of the hive and the condensation of the hive may very well rise to dangerous levels promoting or causing problems down the road. It's important to remember the bees do not heat the inside of the hive. They heat the center of the cluster. Between the edge of the cluster, wherever it is in your hive, between the edge of the cluster and this area right here, is that area is the same temperature as the outside air. Bees can handle a the cold, they cannot handle moisture. Now you might be wondering how on earth we find out how much our hive weighs. So this is a simple hive scale you can find on our website. Search scale and you'll find a hive scale. It has a hook and a handle and it has a adjustable zeroing uh, device so you can find out what the weight is when you let go. So take your hive scale and position the hook underneath the handle on the side. Hold the hook and hold the handle and lift up until it lifts up the base of the hive. When you let go, what you'll find is the black indicator has um, gone as far as the needle pushed it um, to the maximum weight. Now what we want you to find out is, is that roughly on the one side when you lift it up and pivot it on the other side, that reading should be around 38 pounds to a maximum of 50 somewhere in that region. You do it on both sides and you take the total of the both and add them together. We did this half earlier and it's about it's approximately 125 pounds based on our reading here. In a while we'll be able to take this the smart hive reading and get an accurate reading. But typically that's within 10 pounds and that's a good number. So it's October the 2nd, it's Strathcona County in Alberta. 
We don't have any wrapping on the hive, no tar paper, no insulation, nothing. We have a very, very large cluster of bees and we have a total weight here um, that is far in excess of what would be required normally to take this hive through even in the worst winter conditions. We have not fed it any supplemental pollen because of the amount of pollen that was going into the hive earlier in the fall and we have not, we've not fed it any supplemental sugar syrup. We have a mouse guard on the front, which we'll replace shortly with an entrance reducer and the mouse guard. We have two full boxes, totaling 20 frames of brood, bees, queen and honey. And then we have our inner cover with the holes for vent ventilation. And then we have our upper chamber, uh, uh, the upper ventilation box with one, two and three, four ventilation holes to keep the moisture moving in the hive. Later in the fall, we will wrap the hive and we'll show you a demonstration of that. And we'll put insulation in the top in a certain configuration which we'll also show you. But for the meantime, our hive is ready to address winter. Okay, so in conclusion, the weight of your hive is important. I've given you a strategy on what you can do to weigh your hive. If your hive is underweight, add frames of honey back that you haven't maybe extracted yet to bring it up to that uh, 45 per 45 tip on both sides. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you in a few weeks on how to wrap and to show you some data from our hive monitor on how much um, weight the hive is losing on a daily basis with the declining fall temperatures. If you need a hive scale you can find one on our website at hiveworld.ca. If you need a hive wrapping kit which is the black tar paper and mouse guard and inner insulation you can also find it under wrapping kit on our website. For more information, special offers, announcements, find us on Twitter, Facebook or YouTube, Hive World CA. Thank you.